please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and we praise your holy name. Thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to praise and to worship you. Thank you for your wonderful presence, Lord, being here with us. I want to pray for each family, each person, Lord, who gave their tithing and offering to you as an act of worship, Lord. I want to pray blessings upon them and their families. I want to pray for each person here today, Lord, they'll completely die to their will. And I pray that you'll open up their spiritual ears and eyes so they can see and hear and understand your word, Lord. I pray for myself, Lord, that I completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for an unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me to allow the word just to flow here this morning. There's someone here that needs to be born again or healed or set free or delivered from anything, Lord. Let them accept you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, if you can, put up the uh, slides first. If you'll look out here next to you in the pew, you'll find a copy of all the scriptures today and a copy of the covenants and the dispensations. Now this is important because this is the third part, the last part of the Noah covenant and the dispensation of human government. Now here's the sad part, is that most people sitting here in this church, or all people actually across the whole world, we are all looking for answers. We're all human beings that was born to sin and there's nothing we can do in our physical being to make ourselves feel good. We try, folks, go out here and get stoned, get drunk, do all these things, buy this, buy that, buy new clothes, all these things, try to make yourself feel good, but the only answer is Jesus Christ. You can buy all the things, do all the things for yourself, but on the inside of you, listen to me, just going to church and just believing is not good enough. Satan believes, demons believe, it's not good enough. You must be born again, hallelujah. When you get born again by the blood of Jesus Christ and He fills you with His Holy Spirit, the nature inside you changes. Amen. Doesn't mean the outside changes. Your outside still wants to mess up. Your outside still wants to sin. Your outside still wants to be part of the flesh. But inside of you something changes. And that's the nature of God. Now, why am I saying all that? Because these run fiction show you now is out here in Scripture, out here in the world, and most people don't have a clue about it. We live in this world, but we're not of the world. But yet we see all the things going on around us. We blame God on half the stuff that's not even got nothing to do with God. And we look at all these things that's happening, and people are arguing and fighting over these things. We have all these different nationalities and religions and all this garbage going on around here, and people are fighting and don't know which way to go because Satan has used the very thing that God has given us, a way out. He's turned it around, and people are so confused with religion and nationalities and who's right, who's wrong. All this fake teaching out here, bumper stickers that says coexist. Coexists. God is love. God is love. Coexist. You said everywhere. Do not fall for the lie of Satan. When you see a bumper sticker that says coexist or God is love, do some research. Hallelujah, God is love. But you better define love. You better define love because the love that's, that that's referring to is not the God of the Bible of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you see the word coexist, it might sound so good on the outside. Let's just all get along. But I'm telling you, it will send you to hell. There is only one way, and his name is Jesus Christ. God never said, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to show it to you in Scripture in just a minute. I'm never going to allow all these different religions and all these different ways to God. There's only one way, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's not my opinion, guys. That's what God's Word says. And you're going to get that out here all the time because what people says is love is tolerance. You go out here in the world and God is love. Do your own thing. Be a homosexual Christian. Be a lesbian Christian. Be a queer Christian. Wrong. The LGBTQ garbage is not from God. I'm sorry, that's not love. 
If you're drunk, if you're a murderer, if you're homosexual, all these things are bad, God will accept you the way you are, but he'll clean you up. You're not going to heaven as a murderer. You're not going to heaven as a homosexual. You're not going to heaven as an adulterer. You're not going to heaven as as a fornicator, hallelujah. Those things are bad and we all are in sin, but God says, when you come to me, I'll clean you up. I'll put new nature inside you. It is not love to sit here and say, tolerance, do what you want to, and God's going to accept me and keep me the way I am. No. And the reason folks are doing these things is because they don't know God's covenants. They don't understand that there's eight covenants and seven dispensations of time. Most folks don't even know what covenant we're in right now, much less what dispensation and what they mean for you. They don't understand that after every single dispensation of time, there is a judgment. And they will be at the end of this one as well. They don't understand that every covenant in the past has an effect and is still going on right now. For example, to make sure you understand this, if you'll put this up and look at this, we've already taught on the very first two covenants, and this is the third message in the third covenant. And God lays that here very clearly, if you look at this, in the Edenic covenant and the dispensations of being innocent, when he puts spiritual man, male and female. And I'm sorry, all the folks out here who wants to have more genders, you're just wrong. You can say, guys, y'all, if you don't understand what I want to talk about here, it's going on around now. They've got hundreds of genders. You just make up stuff. I'm a they, I'm a they, I'm a zim, I'm a he, I'm a he. No, you're not. You're a male or you're a female. It don't matter, as I said before, my little dog, coconut, might want to be a cat and come meow like a cat and even go poop in a litter box. But he's still going to be a dog. <laughs> no matter how he tries to feel, your feelings don't change God's covenants or God's word, hallelujah. And that's what's wrong with the world today. We think we're supposed to go by our feelings. God has made a male and a female, period. Man and woman, period. We're all equal in God's eyes, but you've got different roles to play. Your feelings don't come into play there. I can't have a baby. It's not possible. I can't be a woman or a female. And now we've got it set in the world today where, hey, I can be a transgender, I can be a bi, I can be whatever you want to come up with. I can just choose today. Today I want to be a woman, tomorrow I'm going to be a man. That's called demon spirits. You're mentally insane. God did not make you that way. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. And we don't want to hear that out here no more. In the churches, I mean, I can understand out here in the world, but in our churches, we don't want to talk about it no more. It's sickening because we don't know God's word. God made Adam and Eve, hallelujah, spiritually in the very first covenant before the fall. And God set a covenant in a dispensation time out there. And I've done preached all that. I'm not going to do it today. All the things that happened there. Then he goes into the second covenant. And he gives them a physical body. Now he's already, he already blessed them. Gave them a kingdom. And now the Edenic covenant and conscience. Everybody here has a conscience. Comes in and now it's after the fall. Now you don't understand this. We all in this room have a spirit and a soul and a body. Everybody in this room has that. And I always hear all the time, well, Brother Greg, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody. I've heard this so many times. You know why we say that? Because we want to stay in our sin. We want to stay in our flesh. We want to stay in the thinking of that. You're exactly right. Your flesh ain't perfect. It never will be until it's changed at the very end. But what is perfect? What is perfect? Hallelujah. What's been born again? I didn't say if you're religious. What's been born again? What's been born again is your spirit and your soul, hallelujah, inside of you, and it's being changed, has a new nature, and hallelujah, it is perfect. Amen. So when the Bible says, be ye therefore perfect, even as my Father in heaven is perfect, you need to look at yourself and refer to yourself as your spirit man is perfect. My flesh is not what my spirit is. That's who God speaks to. All things that's ever going to get in the way is your stubborn soul. 
And your soul don't want you to hear this. Your soul don't want you to know these things, where they come from, what they mean. Remember how this operates. In the very first two covenants here, if you remember, there were two people under that covenant. Two. That's it. And then God lays out the kingly, the priestly way, hallelujah, for them to operate. But God says that He was God. He was the judge. He was the redeemer. He is in control of all things, and He gives it now over to man. This is important to see this. And all of a sudden, now you have another covenant called the Noah Covenant after the flood. Remember, God had to flood the whole, whole earth. And most folks miss why He did this. I've already brought this out in the last three or four weeks, if you remember. This scripture is not up there yet, but this, just remember this Genesis 3 15, when after the fall, when God spoke to the serpent, which is Satan, and said, I'm going to separate your seed from her seed. Remember this Satan's job. Or what he wanted to accomplish was do what? To stop the spiritual seed of Christ coming to this earth to redeem us. If he could stop that, if he could stop that from happening, we all are doomed. Because he already threw Adam and Eve. God put an angel in front of the tree and said, you can't touch it under this state. Remember that? And it's important to understand that. Why? Because the Bible says under Noah, remember this teaching on this, that all was filthy, not just sinners, but remember demons, Satan, angels left their first estate and came down here and took on daughters of men. And the offspring of that and also animals were called Nephilim. Nephilim is the giants in the Bible. What did David slew? Giants. What did they see when they come out of Egypt going to the promised land? Giants. Okay, you got to hear this now. It's important. So God said that before, even, in, even, even after the flood, it was evil. It was sickening. And you had two in the very first two covenants. Now you have a judgment. Now God said, I'm going to give man another chance. Under the Noah covenant, he takes eight people. Noah and his wife, his sons and their wives. What does eight mean? It means a new beginning. God takes eight people, has the ark built, puts them on this ark, and God himself shuts the door. Now watch, why is this important? Because Enoch, right before the flood happens, is caught up in the air and he walked with God. Knowing his family wasn't caught up. They had to go through the judgment, through the flood, through everybody dying, and yet he brings them out on the other side and says, now I'm making a new covenant with you, which represents the true church, not religion, being caught up in the air to be with the Lord in the air, hallelujah, and the Jewish people will go through the next judgment that's on the earth. Y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? Yeah. But he's with them. Now, why is this important? Because under this covenant right here, now things have changed. He said to Noah, I am not no longer going to be the one who's judging everything. Because how many times have you heard out here when you're out here preaching to people, who are you to judge me? Who are you to judge me? You can't judge me. You can't judge me. Bible says don't judge unless you be judged. All that's fake religion. That's not what the Bible says at all. The Bible says don't judge unless you be judged if I'm judging from my flesh because of what you're wearing, by how your hair is combed, by how rich or poor you are, whether you look good or not. That's what he's talking about there. But you keep reading the Bible says all those who have a new nature inside them, all those who's filled with the Holy Ghost, all those who's born again is supposed to be judging all things, hallelujah, in Christ. So yes, I can judge if a homosexual, if that's wrong or right because God's word, his moral standard says it's wrong. So yes, I can say it's wrong. That's not my opinion. That's what God Almighty says. It's wrong to have an abortion. It is wrong to kill babies. Don't sit here and try to put little, little, little ribbons all over and call it health care for women. No, it's called murder in God's eyes, period. Whether, whether we like it or not, whether it makes you feel good or bad, doesn't really matter. God has a moral standard, hallelujah. But then God says to Noah, now you are required, required, 
not for me, Noah, to do it all, but under the new Noahic human government, under the third dispensation and third covenant, he says, now you're going to be in charge and you're going to judge. And when someone murders someone, it's your job to judge that and put them to death. Oh, but girl, I can't, I can't believe that. Well, remember, look at the scripture right here. Read this later. Romans 13, 1 through 4. I brought this out to you last week, so I'm not going to go over the whole thing with you again. But all of your policemen, all of your military, all of your judges, all these people are ministers for Almighty God, to have, and they're good to fight against evil, and they're ordained of Almighty God. You're ordained of God. If somebody comes into your house tonight trying to hurt you and you shoot them, God says that is not murder. Nowhere in Scripture does it have, in the Ten Commandments, does it say, thou shall not what? It don't say that. What does it say? See, people always get this confused. We sit here and read the Ten Commandments, and we think we know what we're talking about. But yet, when you go back and study it out, nowhere in the Ten Commandments does it ever say, thou shall not kill. It says, thou shall do no murder. Murder is different than killing. Why is that important? Because remember, you wouldn't have one chance if something wasn't killed for you. In the very beginning, from Adam and Eve, all the way through Noah, all the way until right now, everybody in this room cannot be born again, or you can't even live unless something dies for you. Let's just take it right now. You say, well, I'm a vegetarian. Well, great. Pluck that old lettuce up and that, and that, and that corn up, and you plucked up uh, the asparagus, it starts to die. Something must die for you to live. A cow, a goat, a pig. Something must die for you to live. That's the way God's nature is set up. That's how his kingdom is set up. From the very beginning, animals had to die as a sacrifice to cover the sins. Christ had to come as the Lamb of God so he could die for our sins. Hallelujah. Y'all getting hold of this, anybody? So I get tired of hearing people try to use excuses. There's only one way, and his name is Jesus Christ. Remember... Under what this is showing us here, that all your military and judges and everything under this Noah covenant, the very first part of it, has laid it out for us. Now, let's kind of bring this kind of a little bit deeper. I brought it to you last week, if you remember, <clears throat> the week before that, excuse me, about God putting a rainbow. How many of you ever seen a rainbow? How many of you ever seen a double rainbow? You ever seen that? It's beautiful, ain't it? Okay, the rainbow is from Almighty God. And that was put there to show the world he's already flooded the earth twice. We've already proved that. Once at the beginning with the angels fighting each other, and God separates the firmament, verses 1 and 2. And they didn't know this time he floods the whole earth as well. And God said, I'm going to put a rainbow there for me to see, to remember my covenant I have made with you, and the world and all the animals of the earth, I will never again judge this way, and I'll never again flood the earth this way again. But I will another way. How, how, and how, how's he going to do the next way? It's with fire. And what does Satan do? He takes the LGB community, etc., and they steal the flag. Satan steals the rainbow flag. So wherever you see rain, I mean, there's churches out here right now, guys, there's homosexual churches, and their flag is, is a rainbow flag flying on the church. Did y'all know that? All who wants to come in is tolerance. Come on in. It sounds great, don't it? But it's not biblical. What they're saying there is different than what I'm saying here. I'm saying to this, all murderers, all witches, all homosexuals, all drunkards, come on in. Hallelujah, come on in. Come on in. Hear the truth. When the truth gets a hold of you, it will change you. What I'm not saying is come on in and stay the way you are. You stay the way you are, you're going to go to hell. It's just that simple. No way around it. You're not going to go to heaven by your goodness or your works or by what you do or how good you are. It don't work that way. Anybody get a hold of this? Remember how powerful God's word is. Remember what happened here under this covenant. God starts all over again. They lost their place of worship in the Garden of Eden with God. So the biggest thing was now you're sitting here with eight people on a cursed earth after a flood and things don't operate the same way it did 
in the first two covenants. Now they have no temple. They have no place to go worship God. That comes later on in the next, in the next covenants. You're, you're going to see that. God creates a new people and a new way on purpose to go back to what he had in the garden. This is important to see this, guys. People, hear me, in this Noah covenant started trying to seek God their own way, do it their own way, what, what they felt is good. And people to this very day is doing the exact same thing. Nothing has changed. Now you can also read later here, you see it there, Genesis 10, 1 through 31. I'm not going to bring all those scriptures out for you, but you can go ahead and turn to Genesis 10, verses 32. And why am I showing you that? Because those first 31 verses there, it's just showing you over and over and over all the names of the three sons of Noah and all the generations and all their kids. Why is it important? Because remember what happens in this story. I'm going to show it to you here because God lays it. Look, look here at verses 32. It says, these are the families of the sons of Noah. After their generations and their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Now, why does he do this? I'm going to show you why he does this. I'm also going to show you where all this comes from. Okay? Look at Genesis 11, chapter 11. I want you to see this because most people don't have a clue. Where did the Chinese come from? Where did Japanese come from? Where did Americans come from? Where did Germany come from? Where did Israel come from? All these people. Greg, you can't tell me that all their ways are wrong. Yes, I can. I can tell you that for sure. I can tell you exactly what I'm talking. It's not my opinion. Because I know where Buddha come from. I know where Muhammad come from. I know where all this worldly stuff comes from, religions of the world come from. See, when you understand that because of the covenants, it all starts making sense. The problem is the world and sadly the church ain't taught these things. All we're taught is, is Jesus Christ died for me, said this, Rom this Romans road prayer and I get to go to heaven one day. Da -da -da -da, and then we go out in the world and atheists and all the folks of the world starts asking you questions you don't have a clue because you're not taught anything. All we're taught is God loves me, this I know because the Bible tells me so. Oh, great. But what else? Atheists know more than what we do. That's the sad part. God wants you to be disciples. He wants you to know his word, hallelujah, because he's given you a gift. He's given you the blood. He's given you the power. He's given you himself. The Holy Spirit's inside you. I don't know everything, but I know one thing I can stand before anybody with faith and not fear. And God will give me back and remember the things I need to say. And the things I need to go find, he'll show it to me, hallelujah. Because I have a hunger to learn. But if my hunger is not for that, it's for the world stuff. It's for football. Hey, I, I love football. I do, I love football. But it's not my God. I love all kinds of things of the world, but it's not my God. But Christians have made the things of the world their God. It's more important to them than God's Word. And that's what's wrong with, with our society today. Look at Genesis 11 and look at verses 1 through 4. Now watch how this operates here. Very, very powerful. I want you to say some things. It's very deep here. <clears throat> and the whole earth was of one language. This is pretty cool here. Watch, I want you to get a hold of this. One language. This is during Noah's time. All the earth, one language. And of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there and they said to uh, to another, go, let us make brick. Hold on the word brick. Notice it's not stone. Who, who, was your, who was your cornerstone? Christ. They're having to make brick. Not stone, brick. And burn them thoroughly, and they had, to, they had brick for stone. Not stone, but they had brick. It's important to see this. And slime from the earth, which is the clay mortar, for, for mortar. And what's this? And they said, go to let us, another word us, is important. Who is the us here? This is, this is not Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit here, okay? Remember in the very beginning, remember God said, let us 
make man in our image, hallelujah. Here now in Noah's day, you've got them speaking, saying, let us. Now watch this. They said, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. On the word name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, why is this important? I want you to understand how, how this is important, guys. Here in Noah's day, they started a new race who's trying to build their own world religious center because it was taken away in the first two covenants because of the fall of man. Now they're going to do it their own way. Now they're going to sit here and say, we're going to have our own new world order, our own new world center to glorify themselves, to make us our name, which is what's... And just, just, just look around today, guys. What do you see? How many of you ever try to learn a new language? Anybody in school? Okay. If you're not in high school or college and you go out and you want to learn a new language, what is the biggest thing that it's called that you try to get to learn? I know the, the actual name of it. It's called Babel. Babel. You can buy a program. It's called Babel. And it teaches you how to speak French and German and, and whatever. Why do you think that's called Babel? Because right here, they're building a tower called the Tower of Babel. This is where you got all the different languages from. I'm showing you here today for you to understand where all this stuff comes from. Okay? It's important to see this. And it's, I don't have time to go through it all today. If you start breaking down all the different kids, we're going, we're going to kind of look at it in a minute, you'll start seeing where all, where, actually where you come from naturally. You'll start seeing where, what part of the world you're from, what child is linked to. Because there's three kids here under Noah. And one of them has a curse, <laughs> big time. So all the people of that line is under a curse now then you have two more brothers, and one comes, from, that's where Israel comes from, okay? And one will serve the other. You're going to sell that as we get through this. But you don't have to live that way if you're born again, hallelujah, okay? I'm just trying to get you to understand your nationality won't get you to heaven. You can be from Japan or China and be a Chinese Christian, a Japanese Christian, a German Christian, a Russian Christian, an African Christian. American Christian. What makes us all the same is being a Christian, being born again with the kingdom of Almighty God inside of us. If you're trying to be different from your name, be proud of your heritage, but your heritage will not get you to heaven. And God will not accept your heritage into heaven the way you are. You must be born again. And this is where, this is where it all comes from. I want you to see this, and that's very important because most people miss what I'm fixing to show them here. Now, before I get into this, I want to make sure I just kind of read something to you. I found this here in my Bible. Now, most of you are going to have the same thing in your, in your written in your Bible. I want you to look at the parallel layer of what's taking place here of what we call the church and the story. Okay, I'm going to read a story to you in just a minute. Let me just read something here to you. The history of Babel, which means confusion. Now, listen to this. It's parallel with the professing church. Now, why is it important? Well, first of all, they had unity in one language. The church is supposed to have unity. Is it? I want you to watch this now. If you start looking in the church, what you'll find is it all physical part of Babylon is physical. God's true church is spiritual but the religious church is not spiritual at all. And it ends up going all the way down through history to have the papacy, which is the Pope, and they say they're the church. And what happens from there? People say, oh, I don't think so. So the Protestant church is formed. Protestant church says, we're going to leave what you're saying and go out here on our own. So now you've got religion 
after religion, after religion, after religion, out here spread out, just the same storm for to show you, where God comes down and says, now I'm going to take all of you and scatter you out upon the earth so you can't come together. Religions can't bring you together. But listen, there's Christians in Kothoth, in, inside a Catholic church. There's Christians in a Church of God church. There's Christians in a Church of Christ church. There's Christians in a Baptist church. But Catholicism and Baptist and Methodist don't make you a Christian. No more than my dog can be a cat. Are y'all, y'all seeing this? No such thing as a Baptist Christian. No such thing as a Methodist Christian. No such thing as a Catholic Christian. Does it make any sense? So you've got to understand there's one biblical church. Now, who is the nutcase here that started all this? How many wants it? Now, y'all, y'all can read later here, Genesis 9, verses 20 through 27. Read that later because that's going to go into all the details, if you need it, about Japheth and Shem and Ham. And in that story, here's what you're going to find. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of paraphrase for you here so you don't have to go all, all here, here at all. Noah is in his tent and he gets drunk. Okay? Now, good old Ham comes in and tries to do things to his father. I don't know all the details of what he tried to do, but one thing I do know he tried to do was to steal his robe, to take away his robe. Now, this is important. That's why he's naked there in that story. This is important. The other two brothers backed in where they could not see his nakedness and covered him up. And Noah had to start speaking curses and blessings to these kids. That's what you're going to read there. And Ham was under the curse. Now why is it important? This is important to see this, guys. Because when you start seeing Ham's line, it goes all the way to Nimrod. Who's ever heard of Nimrod. Okay, Nimrod is the very character here who brings everybody together. And who is his wife? You remember? There's a good old religion uh, time every year that's named after her. You remember? Estar. Where do you think you get Easter from? Hello? It's from this very pagan. Christ did not die and arise on the third day at Easter. That comes from Catholicism, a fake church. I'm going to tell you straight out. The Catholic church is not the foundation. I don't pray to Mary. I don't use rosary beads. If you pray to Mary or use rosary beads, that's called idolatry. You cannot do that. Mary is a great woman, wonderful. She, 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 she birthed Jesus out. But no word is safe for me to pray to her. If I do, I'm putting her up as a God. If I, if I go to the Pope, I put him up, up as a God. If I use rosary beads, that actually goes back to witchcraft. Look it up for yourself. I have to say in some rhythm, trying to turn beads so God can hear me. No, and I don't go to Mary for Mary to pray for me either. I go straight to Almighty God in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the true church, hallelujah. So hear me, I'm not being mean, I'm being honest with you. Okay? It's very important that you see these things, guys, because that's where it came from. The story of Nimrod. Where do you think December 25th come from? Now we know, I always, every year during the season of what we call Christmas, I always teach the birth of Jesus Christ. Just because everybody wants to talk about it. But he was not born at that time. Has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. So don't go bake him a birthday cake. December 25th is when, listen, Nimrod was married to Estor, hear me, and their child, hear me, their child was named who? Tammuz. How many of you ever heard of Ash Wednesday? You ever seen it out here? People, you be in a grocery store and you see some guy looking, you kind of look at his forehead, you see his big old jump, who's loose like a big old cross on her head. It's called Ash Wednesday. Poor things are fooled. It's got nothing to do. That's, that is paganism. It goes back to the Catholic Church as well. It's not a cross of Jesus Christ. It goes back to Tammuz. Tammuz was supposed to kill by a wild boar 
That's why you have Easter hams. And he supposedly resurrected, reincarnated. He was born on December 25th and reincarnated at Easter. Has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Christ gave us a time in his covenants of when he was died, when he was buried, and when he arose. Hallelujah. So is it okay to talk about his birth? Yes, that's fine. But don't dare get up here and say he was born December 25th because he wasn't. That was placed in here by religion of man. And don't be so dumb to follow it. Lives are beautiful. It's wonderful. It's okay to have, 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 have a good time during Christmas time. But don't say and say, well, the real reason for the season. No, it's not. If you're going to have the real reason for the season, go back to September, October. That's when he was born. On a feast day. And I'm not being mean. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, go back and look at John the Baptist's cousin and go back and look at his father and go back and look at the priesthood and go back and, and measure and count the months and you'll see exactly when he was born. You know, what December 25th. Do your own research, guys. I'm just trying to show you where this stuff comes from. It comes right back to the Tower of Babel. It comes right back to Nimrod. It comes right back to Noah's three sons. It goes right back to this very curse. And I don't want you to walk around being cursed because you're walking under it. Come out from among that garbage. Anybody seeing this? If you want to put a porn set up, fine. If you want to put a Christmas tree up that's between you and God. Lights are fine. But we always miss what God lays out for us. We miss the biblical things. We miss Hanukkah. We miss the light of the world. We miss things that God's given us because we're in the world system trying to do it our way just like they were trying to get to heaven on their own. It don't work that way. Is anybody seeing this? So you can read that later yourself. And that's what you're going to find. This is where all the religions of the world come from. This is where all the false gods come from. I mean, do you really want to sit here with some little fat guy with his belly hanging out? You see statues everywhere. With his legs crossed, the Buddha. Came and eat right. I'm going to worship that? I don't think so. Uncle Joe wasn't some cow that was reincarnated. I mean, if I got a bunch of roaches in my house, I'm going to kill them roaches. But see, a lot of folks from India won't kill roaches or eat the cow because it could be Uncle Joe or, or, or Aunt Betsy. It's stupidity. And that's how Satan has got us so mixed up. Because we're sitting here trying to do it our own way. We miss what God says. And we're sitting and Satan's laughing at us. Listen to me. The Babylonian system right now is still in place. All the world system you see right now is the Babylonian system. They're still trying to worship a false god. And most people miss what's taking place. Look at Genesis 11. Look at verses 5. Y'all seen this, anybody? Now, why is this important? As, you, as you're turning here, why is this important? Why is this, why is this important that this happened to Ham? And why does all this mean? Understand, guys, God the Father has a robe. He's the powerful, almighty God. And when you're sitting here under the Babylonian system trying to do it your way, it is no different than Ham going here trying to steal his daddy's robe, trying to set up his own kingdom, his own way. He's going to be in charge. You hear me? There is a king of this world system, and his name is who? Satan. And there's a king of God's system, hallelujah, and Jesus Christ is the king of kings. Are y'all seeing this, anybody? When you get born again, not religiously, when you simply say, Lord, I can't see you, I don't understand all this, but I believe, according to your word, that you did die for me, you was buried for me, you arose for me, I can't see it. But I want what you have. Please come save me because inside of me, something's wrong. I can feel it. When you say that by faith, what happens? You get born again. When you die in Christ by faith, you're raised back up. He gives you a brand new nature and a brand new name on the inside of you. And that is the kingdom of Almighty God. And now you'll be in this world looking around and you don't fit in. Now, the things you used to do, you don't have a desire to do no more. Amen? Now look at this right here, verses uh, 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the, and the tower which the children of men builded. Did you catch that? The children of men. Not sons of God. What, what are you called today? 
If you're born again, what's your position? You're a son of Almighty God. That's why I'm a child of God, and, I'm, and I can have the power now to become sons of Almighty God. Amen. Here is children of men under a curse. Now watch this. So very, so very powerful. It says, Children of men build it, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing, and watch this now, nothing will restrain them from which they have imagined to do. Do you realize how powerful your imagination is? Do you know what Satan's playground is? It's right there. Because listen, nothing on this earth is built until you imagine it, until you think it. If you want something to be done, what do you have to do? Steve's a child artist. He can't just start drawing. He has to imagine it. He has to see it. He has to see it in his mind and then start drawing it. Manifest it on paper. A builder has to manifest what he sees through a hammer. Computers, you manifest what you understand and you put it there. And listen, I can't just sit here and say, computer, do it for me. You've got to push some buttons, don't you? You've got to do it. And if you don't know it, it ain't going to happen. So understand, God knows this process because he, He's the one who created it. So He says they can do whatever they imagine to do. So what does God do? He says, verse 7, Go to let us go down there, confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. God on purpose, on purpose, split them up. But I don't understand, Greg. I think we should all come, come, come together as one. He said, not a good thing. We all come together as one. What, 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 what did God say about that? First of all, what are you coming together as one about? And who's doing it? They come together as one. They imagined it. They're under Satan. Under, they're saying, we're going to make our own name, have our own worship center. How many of you have been to uh, Rome to see the Catholics' big giant worship center? Anybody? I hadn't, but and I don't really care anything about it. But I'm just going to show you, it's there. This is what the same thing's talking about here. We don't need that garbage. This building here is not your church. It's a building. Who was the church? Hallelujah. You are. Wherever you go, you're the church. You don't go to church, you come to worship and learn and grow. Now watch this right here, verses 8. So the Lord has scattered them abroad from, the, from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. They stopped. Hallelujah. Now watch this right here. Therefore is the name of it called what? Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the languages of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. Now, is that, does that mean for God to do this? No, not at all. Because if you come together as one without God, I'm going to show it to you in just a minute, you're in trouble. And God knew this. Now, what happened is they all left. This is where you get all your different little nations from. And they all started building their own little cities, their own little Buddhas, their own little towers, their own little pyramids, their own little temples. That's where you get all of this from. This is where you get Buddha and Hindu from. All your false religions of the world all come from this. This is, where this, this is the answer right here. So you want to know where they come from? Right there. Okay, this is it. Now why is this important? Because the Father is a devil of that, not Almighty God. God has his kingdom and Satan has his kingdom. Now, here's what's important. If you understand prophecy, what's trying to take place as we speak right now? You've got religion of man. You've got Satan and the Antichrist trying to right now upon this earth, not the true church, to set up a what? One world government, one world religion, having one world currency, and we all are policed by a one world police. I don't believe that. Well, watch, take this just, just, just a little bit and read your books. Have you, you ever heard of the UN, United Nations? They think they're in control of everything. That's been set up. This, this is trying to go right back to the same thing. One world religion, one world government, come together as one. It's trying to go right back to the very same tower 
to the very same Babel system and come together as one without God as they try to do from the very beginning. And God scattered them abroad. That's why you've got all these people out here under these different nations scattered abroad the way they are now. And God says the only way you different nations can come back to me is one way. How many here wants to know that way? Go to Acts 2. Most folks miss what this is even talking about. Acts 2, you've heard the story a thousand times. Most folks miss this. Under these covenants and under the feast days, hallelujah, God says, I'm making a way. Okay? Now look at the story here in Acts 2. I love this. Because now it starts making sense of why this I showed you. Okay? Verses 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, let's stop right there. What's, what, what does that mean? We already know we got seven feast days that God's given in His scriptures. Okay, Christians, how many have been fulfilled? Anybody know? Four of them have. The very first four have been fulfilled. The death of Christ, the burial, the resurrection, and 50 days later when He arose, He comes to Pentecost and starts the church. But on that very same feast of Pentecost, thousands of years before, same feast, he gives the Ten Commandments. And now he's fulfilled this. Now watch what happens here. This is so powerful. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Did you catch that? I thought it was wrong to do that. Not in Christ is not. See, if you're trying to build your religion and glorify yourself and bring all the nations together. Let's respect everybody together. There's churches out here right now teaching that Muslims, God is the same God that we have. No, it's not. That's a lie from hell. That's not the same God. It's not. Sorry. I do not serve that God that they serve. That's scripture. I serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who created Israel. Hallelujah. And Christianity was born through that to bring in Christ. Hallelujah. That's the God I serve. How about you? Now watch this right here, guys. Look. It says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with what? Other tongues. Where did tongues come from to start with? Remember, in Noah's day, there was all speaking one language. One language. And they were determined together to do what they're going to do. And God's like, uh, not going to happen because something's missing here, which is called my son. You're trying to do it on your own. You're trying to get to me on your own. Your own goodness won't work. Your own religion won't work. Your works won't work. Are y'all seeing this, anybody? This is important. So now, here, Christ has died, was buried, and arose. They believe in him. He said, go and wait upon the Holy Spirit. And now they're there together as one. Look at this now. This is so powerful. The verses 4 again. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Go back, go back, go back to verses 3. Let's kind of read this together. And there appeared unto them cloven like tongues as a fire, and it set upon each of them as they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As what gave them utterance? The Spirit gave them utterance. They were now speaking in a language that God had spread out and confounded that they didn't know. Can I go back? This, can, can, just kind of watch this now. Say you're sitting here at the Tower of Babel. And God comes down from Christ and the Holy Spirit and confounds other people's languages and sends them out. So you, know, you, got, you got one guy over here speaking Russian, one guy over here speaking Chinese, one guy over here speaking Japanese, and one guy speaking English. Never heard that before. Now they can't understand each other. So they're all scattered, all scattered abroad. Now Christ comes in thousands of years later when they try to do it on the Tower of Babel themselves. And God said, don't think so. 
Christ comes in and fulfills these very covenants and these very feasts. Christ is the last Adam. He died, he was buried, and he arose, and now he sends the Holy Ghost back down. Hear me now. This is important. And what happens? Now they're all speaking in different languages that they would not part or born of. They're not from Russia, but yet they're speaking Russian. They're not from Japanese or, or, or Japan, but yet they're speaking Japanese. They're not from China, but yet they're speaking Chinese. How is this possible? Because something took place here. Watch this now. This is very powerful. Verses 4 again. As they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, tongues, and, and, and as of the, of the Spirit gave them utterance. Verses 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out, out of where? Every single nation under heaven. Every nation that was created by Almighty God through the Tower of Babel, through Noah, that God spread out. He had a, a representative from every nation right back there on that feast day because God required them to come back on that feast day and He knew it. He's fulfilled the very first three feasts and sends the Holy Ghost back down this feast. Y'all seeing this? Verse 6. Now when there was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard him speak from what? His own language. His own language. His own language. Why? Because what Nimrod tried to do in the Noahic covenant and build that Tower of Babel to get to Almighty God out of brick and clay of the earth and come together as one, God says, no, you can't do it by yourself, man, because you're under a curse from the very first two covenants. You've lost me. You have no way of worshiping me. So they're going to do it on their own, make a name for themselves. And God says, no, you're not. So he scatters them on, on purpose. He makes them go out from among each other. And all the way through God's ways, hallelujah, we know what happens. Christ is born. He fulfills this. All the nations now are there together as one. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried for us, and arose, He sends the Holy Ghost back down now so all nations can come together as one in God's kingdom in Christ Jesus. Because Christ is the only way back to heaven. He's the only way back to God. There is no way to Almighty God. There is no way to heaven. There is no way to His kingdom except through Jesus Christ. Is anybody seeing this? That's what Pentecost really was all about. Yes, it was starting the church. Yes, it was sending His power. I got all that. But the reason they spoke in tongues, the reason they did that was turning it around of what happened in the North Covenant on the Tower of Babel. God scattered them out. Now, now God brings them back together under Christ. Are y'all getting a hold of this, anybody? So religion won't do it for you. Religion separates us, and God says come together as one. And I've tried, Gary's tried, try getting a whole bunch of religions together and see what happens. All you Baptists stay together, all you Methodists stay together, all you Church of God stay together because we come up with our own little ways of thinking, our own little ways of doing things, pull things out of context and say, this is my way. That's no different than what they're doing here on the Tower of Babel saying, I'm going to do it my way. No different. We have our own little idols, our own little gods that we set up. And that's in the way of us understanding the power of God. And next week, we're going to get into the next feast day, which is where everything changes, the Abrahamic covenant. Now, there you'll find out about the Muslims. There you'll find out about Mecca. There you'll find out about where all that comes from. There you'll find out about your true salvation of where it comes from. Very, very powerful when you start getting into understanding the Abrahamic covenant and the promise. So in closing, the very first three Covenants. Ladies, <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The reason you hurt when you have a baby, when you get married, 
It's not because God wants, God's mad at you. No. Because in the beginning, they didn't hurt when they have babies. But after the Adamic covenant, one of the parts of that curse God spoke to Eve was what? Your desire shall be what? Under your husband. You can't change that to the very end. But, but, but great, the world says, who's in charge of the world? Satan. But my, but my preacher says, then your preacher's wrong. But my religion says, well, then your religion's wrong. See, anything that goes against God's word is wrong. Me included. If I say something against God's word, I'm wrong. So the, you go out here in a few minutes and start, start digging out here in the, and go and plant your tree. You could be a superman. Great. I don't care if it's, if it's, if it's cold outside. Do for an hour and see what happens. What you going to do? When I'm up here preaching, what, 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 am I, what am I doing right now? I'm sweating. The reason I get I'm sweating on my brow is because when you start working, that's part of the curse upon the earth. You should not be that way. You go out here camping or go walking in the woods. You start hearing a growl out here in the woods. What do you do? Right? Why? Why? It used to not be that way. We have fear. Is a bear going to get me? And the animals are saying, is that human going to get me? That's from, that's from these covenants. Right? If you want to be a vegetarian, that's fine. You can be a vegetarian, but you can also eat meat. That's part of the covenant. I'm just trying to show you where these things come from. So you're not a fool. Religion. All these goofy religions out here. All the ones they put up there from Muhammad to Buddha I can name tons of them. Hinduism, guess what? Their God is dead. And he's in the, he's in the grave. My God's not dead. He arose from the grave. He's the very one who made the way for everybody who was spread out among this earth under these nations and religions to come back together as one and don't bring your garbage with it. I know folks who's, I'm proud to be an Indian. I'm proud to be a, from a German. I'm proud. Why? I'm proud to be a Christian. Think about that. Because what you don't realize in closing, guys, is that every nation that was confounded out here and put out here, every one of them is attached with a curse. Every one of them has their own little curse. The black, white, Chinese... How many have ever heard this one? I look at Tony because she's got some in her. <laughs> and I might have some in me a little bit. I just get angry because I'm what? I'm an Irish. That's just the Irish blood in me. No, it's called the Irish curse in you. You don't have to be that way. If you're born again, your nature changes. Your flesh, yes, is that way. You can trace DNA down. You can see these things where it comes from. But you don't have to be that way. You could be a born-again Christian. Whether you're Irish, whether you're from China, China doesn't matter. Russia. Y'all know all the movies about Russia. Just trying to hear all mean. Y'all ever, ever watched Rocky? You may have watched Rocky. Okay, you don't have to be in a communist country saying, well, that's just how I was born. No, you could be born again as a Christian. Are y'all seeing this, anybody? Socialism, communism won't get you to heaven. Don't listen to the world system, guys. The world system from Satan tells you what? There is no absolute wrong or right. They tell you to choose what you want it to be. I don't believe in hell. So, does that not make it real? Think about it. It's no difference. Again, as my dog said, I'm a cat. He's no cat. He's a dog. I can say, I don't believe in hell. It's still real. Lesbians, homosexuals, transgenders. Okay, how you feel? That's just not you. Just being mean, Greg. No, all of that comes from this very thing right here, the Tower of Babel. It comes right from Satan, and God says, "I brought it back." And all I'm trying to show you, Christians, is what belongs to you, and who you are in Christ, and the power of Almighty God. Amen. Can we stand to our feet? Did y'all get all this? Everybody understand all this? I know Noah's covenant was very 
deep and powerful. There's a lot to it. We have it on the internet. Go back to read it. Look at it. Go to YouTube and watch it. If you don't want to go to YouTube, ask for a CD or DVD. We have that too. Go to Facebook watch it. Learn. Hallelujah. Now here's the, here's the thing in closing. Most of you guys in here are Christians. Would y'all say amen? Most of you believe in Jesus Christ and have been born again. And you're here to worship and grow and learn. You should. But if you are here today and you don't know for sure that you are a Christian without any doubt you've been born again, then this is your opportunity. You know you need something. And you're not going to find out here in the world. You're not going to find out the religion of man. It ain't going to happen. You're never going to be good enough. You can't change your ways enough. I done tried. Don't work. If you want to be born again, a Romans Road prayer won't do it either. That's part of it. I can help lead you. But what's the most important thing? The Holy Spirit is here right now. Can y'all feel it? If it draws you, you know you need Jesus. You repent and then you pray and ask for forgiveness. Repenting means what? You're genuinely sorry for what you've done and who you are. You don't feel right. And when you repent, you ask Christ into your heart and you can be born again. And the whole nature, the whole kingdom changes inside you. Now, if you know for a fact, guys, you have been saved, thank God for that. Now, at this point, the story for getting ready to close is for you to be obedient. What does God want you to say or do? What does God want you to pray? Or does God want you to speak? At this point, just listen to the Holy Spirit and be obedient and watch what happens when you do. How many of you here believes that God still heals today? How many of you here believes that God wants to use you for that very purpose? Amen. That's right. Exactly right. I don't think you guys understand how many folks are out here in the world today that's full of demons. How many so-called Christians this Halloween will go busting doors down at uh, haunted houses? And then they're not going to realize when they come back home the next week or two why they're having nightmares, why their lives turned upside down. It's not God's fault. You allow a demon to come in, mess with you, and oppress you and torment you. Don't be blaming God. But Greg, there's, 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 there's good witches and bad witches. Who told you that? Show it to me in Scripture. You know, so say it's a good witch and a bad witch. Y'all not see what's going on today? This morning alone, on TV, you're sitting here with witches in a coven, openly on national TV. Girl, you saw it, didn't you? Having a fire. Praying a curse over Judge Kavanaugh that he would die and have a short time to, to be there as a judge and his wife not have a husband. And we sit back, it's whatever. Really? Christians, stand up. Pray against them witches. Hallelujah. You got more power than what they got. We have got to start taking our place in Christ. We got to start speaking. I dare any of you guys to go to your school, to go to your job. I dare you in His name. You're going to be shocked, guys. I'm telling you, when you know Christ and you start saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, what happens? Boy, them demons, they, 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 they don't like that. I can't say, in the name of Buddha, they laugh at me. In the name of Muhammad, they're going to laugh at me. But when I say, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, they're going to, they're going to whoa. They might find you a little bit. But ask them to tell you their name. They all have names, you know. It might be fear. It might be pain, sickness, poverty. They got to speak it. I tell you one thing, when you hear their name, and you might not like what you hear, sound of the voice. You take control in Christ, hallelujah, because you're in Christ, and speak and see what happens. Don't, don't follow the way of the world. Has anybody seen this, anybody? 
This is what it's all about. God has separated us for a purpose and for a reason. Amen. Steve, my closing prayer today.